The answer to the university's recycling efforts can be found in these black bags. The University Office of Sustainability dug through pounds of garbage today to collect waste and recycling data from three on-campus buildings. Event intern Dana Schroeder set up camp today to make sure students understand the importance of collecting this data. We've got bags from Ramsey Center, Lamar Dodd, and um, the School of Music. You know, as you can imagine, it's sort of a small data set within our total waste, you know, every day in every building on campus. With events like these, the office will determine which buildings on campus are in need of recycling bins and which need a little assistance with sustainability. And so it really does take a long time to do these audits and Laminated gather data building, building by building by building. But so, um, the Office of Sustainability has a really dedicated staff that are really <laughs> working on recycling as one of the, you know, major environmental issues on campus. By sorting through trash here today and picking out recyclable items like this one, the UGA Office of sustainability will track where the university needs to step up its efforts when it comes to recycling. A campus plan has not been made yet, but the Office of Sustainability hopes to expand the recycling effort one trash bag at a time. Yes. Yeah. Thoughtful and small, sixth graders at Athens Academy are celebrating after the National Bone Marrow Registry identified several matches for 12-year-old student Kajal Patel after a record-breaking 2,938 people swabbed their mouths in 24 hours. A lot of people who registered weren't aware that they weren't just registering for Kajal, but they're registering for the whole program. But none of this could have been done without the help of friends and family who love Kajal in every way. I know a lot of her neighbors and her cousins, I'm really good friends with them. And um, they, they always say whenever they're down, she, she'll help them. And now she's down, and it's our turn to help her, and that's what we did. Parents like Whitney Goodstone, who have spearheaded this effort since the start, say that this is only the beginning. Um, there are over 180 people on the waiting list in the state of Georgia alone waiting for a match. And we have a lot of momentum from this. We have a lot of interest, so we want to continue increasing the awareness. Casual's story is just one of many that continues to show that through determination and compassion, anything is possible. Wendell Scott, Grady News Source. Mother Nature's gift on the first day of spring, extremes in yellow. Unseasonably high temperatures are responsible for these outrageous pollen levels. Uh, we've gone through this uh, wonderful spring where suddenly the temperatures have gone sky high. Uh, we're above average in our temperatures and we've got there really quickly. So suddenly all the trees are waking up at the same time. Well, as these trees are waking up, eyes are starting to water and coughs are starting to fill the air. Well, even cameras aren't safe from pollen, and it is actually everywhere. But when people say they're allergic to this yellow stuff, that may not necessarily be the case. There's all sorts of different uh, species producing pollen, and people are not allergic to every type of pollen. In fact, Wilf says when we breathe in pollen, we might sneeze because it's dusty, not because it produces an immune response. But when you do have an allergic reaction, take a visit to your local beehive for some quick relief. If you eat the honey from local trees, you're actually going to be uh, boosting your immune system so that you're not going to uh, you know, be sneezing so much from the pine or from the wildflowers or from the sourwood or from the blueberries. And you thought your workspace was tiny. The UGA Honeybee Program uses these yellow and black workers to answer questions about the declining bee population across the United States. We are primarily studying colony collapse disorder and we also look at uh, beneficial pollinators and, and how uh, bees affect different crops that we have here in Georgia. This morning we buzzed around the UGA Honey Bee Lab with Dr. Keith De La Plain to uncover what students and staff are doing to emphasize proper bee management and how that affects honey production. The process for extracting honey isn't as difficult as you think. When you're extracting honey, you would take each one of those individual frames mm -hmm. out, rectangular shaped skinny frame, and then you would cap the honey and uh, take the take the tips off and very simply you can just uh, individually cut the combs out. Well these worker bees are producing honey with a very local flavor. The extra honey we do take and we uh, uh, extract and, and we have available for sale. They come in all different sizes ranging from a quart to our typical honey bear that is so famous and you can find in most uh, grocery stores and, and markets. And this pure Georgia honey comes in a variety of flavors from sourwood to wildflower. 
The program aims to develop research initiatives that are locally responsive to keep honey in production and bees in the hives. It's a jungle out there, and a student group is dressing for the occasion. The Fashion Design Student Association will hold their Where the Wild Things Are fashion show tomorrow at the State Botanical Gardens. Usually we have two shows a year, one each semester, but we join forces with UGA Fashion Week to have one fashion show for this whole year. Fourteen student designers will showcase their work under the creative theme. We want to have fairy elements and animalistic elements and combine them together to showcase our work. But our Where the Wild Things Are it serves as a theme, but each designer has their own different collection. Now the wild thing about this show isn't the theme, but it's what it's actually benefiting. All proceeds go towards Radio Tanzania, which aims to preserve 100,000 hours of Tanzanian music on reel-to-reel -reel tapes. So they want to take these archives and digitalize them, so they need to raise $13,000. The fashion show is one of the final events of UGA Fashion Week. A historic clothing exhibit on display at the Miller Learning Center will mark the official end of Fashion Week next Wednesday. Wendell Scott. Grady News Source.